I've had a passion for uh, entertaining kids since I was very, uh, very young. I just have a, a natural connection. Uh, it's just sort of a gift. I don't think I really even do anything for it. I, I connect very well uh, with children. So today as I drive across the Tennessee River, I'm thinking about this uh, long road, the many iterations of trash TV, the many iterations of uh, television shows that I've created. Some, some have clicked, some have not clicked. Um, I studied broadcasting and theater when I was in college at the University of North Alabama. I graduated, moved to New York City. Uh, I was in New York City two or three days after I graduated. I was just ready to get started with my professional magic uh, career. The first iteration of um, my television life, I, I created a show on Comcast in Florence and it was, I loved it. I, I loved doing a children's television show uh, for a local and live studio audience. And some of that footage is still floating around out there in the ether sphere of the internet and somewhere in the world, it's still around somewhere. Then I had this idea, because I'm a huge fan of Ernie Kovacs, that I wanted to create a magic show, but kind of an environmentally, ecologically themed sketch show. So I got my friends together. I have, I have so many, so many talented friends that want to pitch in and just do something fun. So I got them together. Um, Alex uh, Lynch was my best friend in high school. And he and I put this project together. Alex had a camera and he knew how to edit very well and we put together this show uh, after we did the Comcast show called Trash TV. And it's so hilarious to look back at the graphics now because it was very difficult then to edit uh, on analog. Uh, everything that you edited was destroyed uh, in analog. You can't try it one way and then try it another. Just the way that you did it was the way that it was on analog. And so we we um, we made the best trash TV we could. Oh, where? Yeah, back there. That sign over there. It says, beware of poisonous insects and snakes. Alex loves snakes. Oh, why does it have to be snakes? <laughs> and it was, it was fun. I, I love looking at the footage. But I really didn't uh, have the connections to make anything happen with it. I was, I had moved back from Los Angeles by then to uh, to Florence, and or actually by then I was living in Frog Pond, uh, out in the woods uh, with the art goddess, and um, so nothing really happened with that. Uh, I tried, but nothing really took off. Then about a decade later, I tried it again. I gathered all of my smart, clever, talented friends around and. Uh, this iteration uh, involved Corey and Jim and so many good, good people. And we made another trash TV. <laughs> and this one was a little closer to what I wanted to do. I had uh, friends play roles in there. Uh, um, uh, Jane and, and Jeff and, and Susan and, just, uh, uh, and uh, Jennifer and all of these really wonderful people that would participate in this silly little thing that I wanted to do, and it was the second, the second generation of Trash TV. Uh, by this point, I really I was in love with the name Trash TV, so I reached out and spent the money to get it listed as a Circle R, as a registered uh, trademark, right? A registered Circle R trademark. I took, uh, I used what connections I had and uh, tried to make it into a uh, national television show, but I just lacked the ability. Well, I just like the connections uh, to get it into the hands of the right uh, people, or it just simply wasn't the right thing at the right time. It just wasn't the right show. Another another decade actually passes, and I have a friend who was a film producer, and she and I were working on a project together. I had actually optioned a screenplay, and I discovered that she had some very, very influential friends, um, one in particular that she had worked on a project 
And this gentleman, if I were to name him, you would know him. He's very famous in the um, kids' entertainment world and in the sci-fi world. So uh, we reached out to him, and he said, uh, yeah, sure. I'm actually doing a project right now that I would be interested in that type of content. So I went over and had supper with him. And I, because things are private in this world, I'm, I'm not going to mention his name until uh, something really happens with this project. But just rest assured that... Uh, you know who this person is. He's a great guy. I've, I've met with him a couple of times. In fact, I met with him the first time I actually had a business meeting with him. Uh, we met at Starbucks in uh, in Beverly Hills. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but it's absolutely 100% true. I get a text from him and he's like, hey, I love coffee. Will you meet me uh, at the uh, Starbucks in Beverly Hills? And I'm like, is the Pope Catholic? Yes, of course. I'll meet you at the Starbucks in uh, Beverly Hills. So he and his two business partners and I meet uh, in Beverly Hills and they love the idea for Trash TV. And so in essence, because they're launching this children's uh, content uh, channel, uh, they option uh, my little idea for a project. So um, they, uh, this, this team of entertainment, uh, children's entertainment company, uh, it takes a while for them to get off of the ground. Uh, this funding's a weird thing. Long story short, years pass, and uh, nothing really gets going. They've got a couple of small projects going, but I'm still in the ring, and they, they call me occasionally and say, yeah, let's, we still want to do that. Uh, we just, everything's moving really slowly. Um, are you still interested? And I say, yeah, of course I'm interested. I know who you are. I think the idea of working with you sounds really amazing, and I'm my whole career has been about being in something for the long haul and I, I like what you guys are about um, let's uh, I'll hang tough until uh, we can get the money and we can make this happen I get a call from the entrepreneurial center the Shoals entrepreneurial center in Florence Alabama uh, Giles is the entertainment director and, and he said I've got this studio here at home in Florence can you come and look at it and I'm like uh, what kind of studio? Like a recording music studio? Because there are lots of those around. He said, no, no, no. I've got a television studio. Can you come look at it? See what is, you know, what's possible? I go in and I see this studio and I just almost, I almost flip out because it's exactly the kind of space that Steve Trash would need to do a show a children's show with lots of amazing magic with a live audience with grandmothers and, and, and moms and dads and kids and it's it's almost everything that you need to make a show like that so I reach out again to my friends and I say look I really want to show you what I've been talking about all these years and a couple of angel investors step in and say yeah we'll give you a little bit of money to see if you can make this into something show us show it show us what you want to make so no, no describing is necessary. You just press play and uh, we'll show you, show us what it is you think you can make. So that's what we're doing. We're making what I believe you press play, I am called to make. I, I'm, I'm looking at this as, I'm sort of looking at my role as being a, a magical Mr. Rogers. <laughs> remember, do you remember Mr. Rogers? He was such a beautiful guy um, on public television. And I really, I believe that Steve Trash, I think I could fill that role. I think I could be sort of a magical Mr. Rogers. And that's what we've set out to do with the new version of Trash TV that we're shooting at Dash Studios as a sponsor. Check it out, man. Nice. This guy's bringing in some hay. All right, so this winter when his cows don't have any grass on the ground to eat, they can, uh, they can eat hay. So maybe, uh, maybe Trash TV is kind of like this hay. You know, we, uh, we planted it 30 years ago. We uh, watered it. We nurtured it. We turned it into the thing that it is now, and it's now uh, time to harvest and create that thing that I have wanted to create for all these years.